Greetings, forensic students. This is Mr. Comer here, and I'd like to welcome you to our third laboratory investigation entitled Forensic Odontology. In this lab, we are going to be making and analyzing teeth impressions um, to solve a simulated crime in which dental impressions are a significant source of evidence. So let's get right to it. Nine days ago, this man, Lyle Mandela, reported his wife, Luis Mandela, missing. Three days later, the body of Luis Mandala was found off of a hiking trail at the foot of Sugarloaf Mountain in the Catskills, approximately 200 miles north of New York City. When Lyle Mandala was brought in for questioning, police noticed that he had a bite mark on his right forearm. Mr. Mandala claimed that he was distraught over the disappearance of his wife and that he had recently visited a bar at which he was involved in a physical altercation resulting in the bite on his arm. Suspicious of Mr. Mandala, police photographed the bite mark impression on his forearm and entered it into evidence. Investigators then collected bite mark impressions of several of the bar pa patrons present on the night of Mr. Mandala's alleged altercation, and finally from the corpse of his late wife, Luis Mandala. In this lab, we will learn how to collect and analyze bite mark impressions, and then we will learn how to compare bite mark impressions to identify the true origin of the bite mark left on Mr. Mandala's arm. Part one, or procedure one, is how to make a teeth impression. I want you to locate your pink wax base plate, and when you do so, you'll notice that it's a rectangle, and I'd like you to go ahead and fold it in half to form a square. Secondly, uh, insert the wax base plate inside your mouth so that to include as many teeth as comfortable, um, as comfortably possible in your impression. Third, bite down on the wax slowly and cleanly. I want you to bite hard enough to leave an impression with your teeth, but not hard enough to bite through the wax entirely. When you are done, remove the wax from your mouth and label the side with the impression from your upper teeth, the side that was facing up when you bit it, with top and do so in the upper right corner. Flip the wax over and label the upper right corner with bottom. Label your impression with the number that was provided by your teacher, that's me and then record your name next to your number on the suspect sheet at the front of the classroom. And be sure to wipe off any excess saliva from your impression before analyzing or sharing or showing off to classmates. Procedure two, now that you've made your bite mark impression, we are gonna learn how we can go about characterizing our bite mark impressions. So there's a pretty simple way that we go about doing this. Uh, when you're looking at your bite mark impression, um, you can label each of your teeth um, with an X if that tooth is missing or for whatever reason is missing from the impression. So, for example, in my impression, I wasn't able to get the bite plate far enough into my mouth to include my wisdom teeth. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to X out uh, my rear uh, molars. Um, sometimes teeth only have a faint impression for one reason or another. And you can use uh, this symbol right here um, to describe um, if they are present in your mouth but didn't leave a complete impression. And you can draw an arrow in the direction of a tooth um, that might be a little bit misaligned. So if you have a tooth that maybe goes in or out or is a little bit of a snaggle tooth, um, as, as many of us do at uh, Subtle Imperfections, you can go ahead and label that um, as you can see in the video below. The second bit is a little bit more quantitative, and um, it's going to involve some measurement. So we're going to be taking some measurements as seen here um, on the wax impression from uh, distances between two specific teeth. So measurement A here is going to be the distance in centimeters from the second left molar over here to the second right molar, pretty much the, um, the widest point in the mouth. Um, then you're going to take another measurement um, from that same second left molar to the first right premolar or bicuspid, the, the tooth that's closest to your canine 
on the opposite side. Um, for letter C, you can see here we're going to take a measurement from the second left molar to the central right incisor, which is um, the front tooth to the right side of your mouth. And then you're going to take this last measurement here um, from the uh, right cuspid um, to the left cuspid. Right. Um, you're going to repeat this characterization process for the sample taken from the photograph of the impression on Mr. Mandala's arm, located in the evidence folder at the front of the room, and also for the impression taken from Mrs. Mandala, which is labeled AB in the corner with a black marker. So you're going to do this entire procedure of bite impression characterization three times. Uh, when you finish up this, uh, you can go ahead and follow the link in your student activity guide to enter all of your data into a spreadsheet and you can, from this, uh, you should be able to determine if Mr. Mondolo's story checks out. Um, then you could go ahead and answer your analysis and conclusion questions and make sure that you um, clean up all of your laboratory materials and leave things neat and clean. Uh, questions, comments, concerns, um, feel free to raise your hand or re-watch the video in specific segments. And for more information or more videos like these, head on over to cambrianed.com um, or tinyurl.com slash comered and click the Hudson High School banner. I hope you enjoyed this video and good luck.